In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Kyrie eleison. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ eleison. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings, so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient, while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Life and freedom, or slavery and death. These are the two options presented over and over again by our Creator to the human race in our long struggle against the selfishness with which we are all born because of the fall from grace at the beginning of the human story. 
And in the Old Testament, there are two preeminent signs of the divergent paths of life and freedom versus slavery and death. And those two signs are Noah's family being saved from the flood and the exodus of Israel from Egypt and their passage through the Red Sea. Both of these signs prefigure the great sacrament of holy baptism, which is the instrument of life and freedom, the sacrament for which the universal church prepares during these 40 days of fasting, prayer, and works of mercy that culminate in the Passover of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection. In our second lesson today, taken from the first of St. Peter's two letters in the New Testament, we read that Christ suffered for sinners and was put to death for our redemption and was brought to the glory of the resurrection in order to offer the gift of righteousness to all who are lost in disobedience to the law and love of God. And this work of redemption by Christ was foreshadowed by Noah, whose fidelity to God saved eight people and prefigured the sacrament of holy baptism. As Second Peter puts it, baptism is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, meaning it is not merely an external ritual, but the sign of an interior renovation of the human person. It is through baptism that we become children of God, members of Christ and heirs of the kingdom of heaven. And in holy baptism, we enter the church as through a door. In six weeks, during the night vigil of Easter and at morning mass on Easter Sunday, millions of people around the world will be born again by water and the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of baptism. And every Catholic who attends Easter mass will renew the promises of holy baptism as a sign of our willingness to follow the Lord Jesus in the way of the cross and to live the new life of grace by forsaking whatever is contrary to the gospel. But living the new life of grace also requires us to understand that while the grace of God is free and unmerited, it is not cheap. In every age, Christians face a strong temptation to render God's grace cheap by expecting baptism without church discipline, by seeking forgiveness without repentance, and by approaching Holy Communion without going to confession whenever needed. But friends, there can be no cheap grace because we were purchased from everlasting death at a great price, the broken body and outpoured blood of our Savior, the same Lord who began his preaching after 40 days in the wilderness with a clarion call to conversion. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. In these 40 days, we can avoid the temptation of cheap grace, embrace the proper discipline of the sacraments, and pursue authentic Christian living by going to Mass every Sunday by praying every day, by going to confession as a preparation for receiving Holy Communion, by serving those in need, and by striving to live according to the promises of our baptism, the promises which bind us through faith, hope, and love to proclaim with our words and with our lives that Jesus Christ is Lord.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord Jesus was tempted in every way that we are, yet did not sin. Let us pray for the grace to repent and believe in the gospel. For the Church of Christ throughout the world, that she may bear fruitful witness to the eternal word of God and lead all men through conversion to the gift of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the baptized, that they will believe in their hearts, confess with their lips, and proclaim with their lives that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who will be baptized at Easter are received into full communion with the church, that their witness will lead all Christians to a renewed dedication to the life of holiness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for those who have lost their faith and those who have not yet received the gospel, that they will accept Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior and live faithfully in his holy church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for all who died, that they will be gathered into the everlasting kingdom to share the joy of the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, whose beloved Son suffered temptation by the father of lies, come quickly to help us in our struggle with sin and grant us grace to surrender our lives ever more perfectly to your holy will through Christ our Lord. A warm welcome to everyone in the church, Galvin Hall, and watching at home. Please join us at 5 p.m. today and each Sunday of Lent for Vespers, and at 6 p.m. each Friday of Lent for the Way of the Cross. A collection plate is available at each door of the church and in Gallivan Hall, and those at home can make a gift by visiting the parish website or sending a check to the office. As ever, thank you for your generosity. Finally, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and that of all the Holy Church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings. For with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our land and observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as with our hand we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving your thanks, he said a blessing. 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you a thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and to strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.